Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. I'm Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, hello, it's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what up y'all? It's great to see you again. So, I wanted to come on today to do an extra reading for us, have a conversation um, about blockages towards uh, self-love. Um, it was an idea that I got, I want to say yesterday or maybe the day before, I don't know, but um, it just came through. I, you know, it was just like a next next uh, major discussion, conversation, blockages towards, towards self-love. Why do we need this? Well, we are in the process of ascending to the fifth dimension. We are moving from a third dimensional planet, third dimensional reality into the fifth. Um, we are in the process of moving towards, uh, moving into the fourth dimension. We have to move, we have to go to the fourth dimension first, and then we get to the fifth. The fourth dimension is the bridge between like the third and the fifth dimensions. Um, the fourth dimension is where we start um, interacting with the astral realms. Um, all manifestations start in the ether, or, or when we manifest, we manifest from a fourth dimension, from the fourth dimension, and then over time, um, the manifestations materialize in the third dimension. Um, so, uh, is that Rosa? Anyway, sorry, Rosa's outside <laughs> causing a ruckus. Um, I might have to close the window, but, um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, yes, so we're moving into the fourth dimension, according to Aluna Ash, whom I suggest everybody watch if you are um, interested in understanding what's going on with the planetary ascension, um, with the the Collective Ascension, I would highly recommend you check out Aluna Ash, A-L-U-N-A-A-S-H. She channels directly from the ninth dimension, so she's got a lot of um, really deep and good insight that is really going to help if you are interested in learning more about that. But according to her, according to what she's seen, um, we will be fully anchored in the fourth dimension by 2025. And from there, we will be moving into the fifth dimension I think will be it will be there sometime within 2030. I want to say I'm hearing 2036, um, but don't quote me on that. I don't know if that's right. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be uh, so so as we move into um, the fourth dimension and then ultimately into the fifth dimension, um, we are moving towards unconditional love. Now, the fifth dimension is where we first come in contact to unconditional love and to um, I believe Christ consciousness as well. Um, ultimately, I believe ultimate Christ consciousness is way higher. I want to say around the ninth dimension, but, um, the fifth dimension is where you first, you know, start experiencing that, really start coming in contact with, with, with that. Um, and in the, you know, in the vein of unconditional love, one must have unconditional love for themselves first before they can really express it outward towards the world and the individuals around them. But... It, 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 you cannot really you cannot really experience unconditional love for the self if you don't first have self love. So hence our latest discussion in self love, and I am going to be doing very much like the same discussion that I had. It's like a, it's kind of like a mental check in. I am using the um, the Oracle of Visions deck for the main messages, and then I will be clarifying with my brand new Arcanum deck. Oh my God, guys! What? I have to give a shout out to Shay of Pisces Moon 1111. She started using this deck in her readings and I saw it and was completely taken by it because it's such a beautiful deck. And I was able to grab, put, get my hands on one at Om Shanti Bookstore. By the way, if you are in the New York City metro area, I encourage you guys to come see me in person at Om Shanti Bookstore, A U M. Om Shanti, S-H-A-N-T-I, there it is. Um, the link to the email, or, I'm sorry, the website is in the description box below. They are located on 14th Street in between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. I will be there every Monday from 11 to 5 doing personal in-face readings. Yeah, you get to see me in, face, uh, in person and we can chat and hang out and have a good time. Yeah, please come visit me. Come, uh, come by and visit the shop. They have a lot of great stuff there. They sell crystals. They sell tarot and oracle cards. They sell a lot of really good uh, religious, uh, spiritual books, books on certain religions. Um, 
uh, let's see what else, um, all kinds of candles and incense and all kinds of really awesome stuff. And they have a lot of other great readers too that are there throughout the week. I do believe that you can call in and schedule a time to come in and have a reading done. So if you want to schedule something ahead of time, I highly recommend that as well. That way you will um, be sure to be able to get a reading when you want or need it. Um, Oh, other than that, I am available for personal readings. All the information is in the description box below. And again, I want to thank all of you who have uh, donated to the channel. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I am so happy to be doing this for you. Um, and the energetic exchange is always greatly appreciated. Yeah. So without further ado, oh, but I do want to say one last thing because this is a discussion true to form. I encourage you guys to uh, grab a beer a glass of wine, a cocktail, smoke them if you got them, and let's talk, yeah? All right, let's get into this, guys. So, I have my two decks here, and my, my glass of wine is shining a light on the table, so I'm gonna move it over. Hopefully the sun doesn't get too much into the way. I really like having the sunlight here, and to be quite honest, it's quite um, symbolic to have the sun shining on the table here. The sun uh, symbolizing illumination, yeah, in this case at least. Um, so I'm starting with the Oracle of Visions deck, and then I'm going to be uh, clarifying with the Arcanum, 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 I don't know how you, however you want to produce it, Tarot deck. And then I'm going to be pulling some Oracle cards. I already feel like the unicorns want to come out and play. Most likely the Oracle of Visions deck, um, most likely the Whispers of Love deck, maybe some Archangel Raphael healing. We, I don't know. We'll see what we, when we get there. Um, yeah, so let's get into this. I'm just going to slide this over. Alrighty. So let's just take a second to breathe and connect. I have already meditated, called in the angels and God and archangels, cleared the space, our ascended masters. I just want to, I, um, so I would encourage all of us to just, as we're, as we're in this moment right now, now understand time and space um, is an illusion. So I'm going to ask you to do this with me, even though I'm recording this now. And technically, according to time, you're going to be watching this after I recorded, but we're all connected at all times. So if we could all just settle in for just a moment, take a deep breath. Good, one more breath. Excellent. Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the collective, the human collective. All of us that are connecting with this video and this message, please make me a clear channel for all of us. Please bring forward the best messages towards blockages we hold or that we face towards self-love. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, so I'm not going to shuffle this in the normal way that I did. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to shuffle, I'm gonna give it three shuffles, right? But I'm not going to cut the deck the way I normally do. I'm gonna give this three shuffles and then I'm just gonna do a freestyle shuffle and see what falls out. And I am going to ask Spirit for three messages in relation to what we face in terms of blockages towards self-love. Now, from this deck, this is mostly going to be mental blockages. And to be honest, that's the best place to start because really it all starts in the mind. All forms of manifestation, creating reality, how we experience our reality, that all starts in the mind, okay? Um, so here we go. Before I got, uh, pull the cards, cheers to us. And let's do this, yeah? All right, Spirit. Three cards, please. One. All right, Spirit. Two more cards, please. Okay. Two cards. Woo! Okay, no, that's too many. <laughs> We're not going to do that. But I am going to take this one. Yeah, breaking free. Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty That's pretty self-explanatory here. One more card, please, Spirit. 
one more card here. One more card, this one. Ah, funny. <laughs> I saw that one on the bottom of the deck and I was like, hmm, I think that's the next message. Um, and I was like, you know what? If it wants to come back out, it will. And look what happened. It sure did. Okay, so I'm going to start with these two cards here because they came out face up. And then we'll get into the last one that's face down afterwards. So let's start with card number 34, Breaking Free. Now, this is, this is, we're looking at this right now from a mental point of view, okay? So obviously the first thing that we need to talk about in relation to what we're, what is blocking us, what we're facing in terms of not loving ourselves and not being able to experience uh, self-love is breaking free from the merry-go-round. What's the merry-go-round, you say? Well, the merry-go-round is mental control, mental conformity. Okay, I did a discussion, I, we had a discussion, I want to say about two weeks ago now, in which I um, mentioned breaking fr free from conformity. And I do believe that's what the name of, the, t of the, the video is. I highly recommend 1111 on the counter. I highly recommend that you guys take a look at that video if you have not already. Many of you I feel like already have and you're following through and that's fantastic. But if you are new to the channel, if you're just now finding me or if you just haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend it. I feel like already there are a lot of themes that are going to be um, uh, coming up that are similar. Um, but also, but, uh, but anyway, we have Breaking Free. Breaking Free from Conformity. You see how we have the depiction of um, this horse that's on a merry-go-round post um, or pole or, and it's, you know, it's just kind of going through the paces, going through the motions, continuing the cycle of learned, um, uh, learned processes, learned conditioning. But then we hear we have the depiction of the greater self of that horse breaking free from the crystal globe, okay? That is, I honestly, I... Conformity. I mean, that is the number one way to really allow yourself to flow and shine. Breaking away from everything that everyone else has told you who to be, how to act. That is, honest, to be quite honest with you, the way I see it and as I have experienced it, that is um, the breaking free from conformity and from control by the people around you, whether they are your parents, your best friends, your siblings, your aunts, uncles, cousins. I mean, even your parents will never really know the true you. They will only ever know so much about you, okay? Because honestly, they can't get into your head and they're not you. They could be psychic all they want, but they still will not know the truest parts of you that are hidden deep down in your inside of you. Okay, so honoring them, yes, is a great thing. But if you're honoring someone else at the expense of yourself, then one of the greatest acts of self-love is to dispel what everything, ev what everyone else has tried to place upon you and to accept what you find within yourself. That is the best way to love and honor yourself. So I'm glad that that came out as the first message. Now. For card number 48, I'm not quite familiar with it, um, but I do what, what I want to do is I'm going to look into the book. I'm not really going to read, well, I'll read the book a little bit. Maybe if it's applicable, then okay. But I just want to get the name of the card at least to help me direct this. Choices, risks, and consequences. Oh man, I don't need to read any further because I know exactly where this is going. All right. We're talking about blockages towards self-love. Choices, risks, and um, risk-taking is what this card symbolizes. Okay, that's great. Now, that, now I totally understand because we have a woman here depicted, uh, depicted as um, releasing these fairies out into the world. This is almost like a Pandora's box situation. Well, what happens if I release these fairies? Are they all going to come back? Are they going to go out and wreak havoc? You know, fairies do like to play tricks on people every once in a while. Now granted, if a fairy's playing a trick on you, you probably deserve it. Sprites are the ones that like to play malicious games just for the fun of it, but fairies are not so much like that, okay? But anyway, the point here is this woman is taking a risk by letting these fairies out of this goblet, we'll call it. 
Okay. And so when it comes to self love, many of us don't take the risk of following our own intuition or own inner guidance because we don't know where it's going to lead us. And then we have all these other people in our ear talk about, no, you don't want to do that. What happens if this happens? What happens if this happens? What happens if you fail? Well, what does happen if I fail? If I fail, I'll just pick myself up and try again. Okay. But this is, I'm going to say that the, the main theme of this reading it really is about choosing to honor yourself and taking the risks to find or go for those things that your heart is guiding you to go for instead of letting your mind and your ego and the way your ego and mind have been trained by everyone else around you to direct that your life path for you. Because ultimately, if you're doing that, you're only living, whose life are you living? And I say this all the time, whose life are you living, yours or theirs? And you want to be living your life, right? I'll drink to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally, from this deck, we have, ah, the illusionist. Now, this card, there are two depictions of what could be considered the magician in uh, from the tra traditional tarot in this Oracle of Visions deck. Now, keep in mind that this deck is not meant, not necessarily meant to reflect the tarot. There are some things in there that tie it into the tarot because the author or the, the creator of this deck, Ciro Marchetti, has done a number of tarot decks. So there are a few images in, in this deck that, uh, you know, that uh, bring forth some sort of recollection, recollection of the tarot. But... Here we have two depictions of what the magician, um, or the number one in the major arcana, can be depicted as. One of them, I consider the other one to be the alchemist, which is a wise, older, uh, older individual who really understands the laws of the universe and is really using it to manipulate and bring forth what he wants. Here we have the illusionist, and this is manipulative yes but this is the this is to me is like the magician in reverse it's manipulation um to get what you want at the expense of other people at least that's how i see this card and when it comes out here we have a big old dilemma in relation to uh the topic of this reading many of us have fallen um under the the influence of a manipulative or narcissistic individual now those of us who suffer from narcissism, especially at this day and age, come from a line of family members, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents that have also experienced um, narcissistic sociopathic abuse. So it's, it is unfair to automatically label these people that exhibit these traits as mean, malicious, wrong, evil, the devil, what, whatever you want to call it. Because ultimately, their point of view has been generated over the course of their lives from situations that they experienced that since they were a child, okay? Now, in no way is that meant to excuse their behavior, but there is a reason for it, okay? And we are taught in today's society to do whatever we can to get what we want. Many, a lot of the children nowadays are taught manipulative tactics to pull the wool over people's eyes, to bait and switch just in order to get what they want because that's really the, quote, only way you can ensure that you will be successful in your endeavors. And unfortunately, that is not true. You can get over on people to get what you want, but ultimately, that's only going to come back and bite you in the ass in the end. So when it comes to self-love, we do, honestly, to be quite honest, we do this to ourselves. We pull the wool over our own eyes. Obviously, we have a central theme here of, of um, authenticity, of being independent, of, of, of trusting yourself, of not trying to trick yourself or others. Because honestly, you can sit there and say that you don't try and, and trick yourself. You're honest with yourself as much, all the time. But then you turn around and you play games with other people and you're dishonest with other people and you're playing tricks on them. And if you're doing that, I'm here to tell you, boo, you're still doing it to yourself. There is no way that you can treat someone else out there the way you don't treat yourself within. It just doesn't work that way. And you may not realize it, but you don't realize it because you are blinded to it. You're not really as in tune with yourself as possible. So here, 
This card is saying, stop playing tricks with yourself. Stop lying to yourselves. Stop pulling the wool of your own eyes. Stop creating all kinds of illusions around yourself to keep yourself in this low vibrational state, in this stuck, stagnant state, in this state of, well, I'm never really going to be able to be, no one's ever gonna really love me, so why should I love myself? That is one of the ultimate forms of trickery, of illusionary thinking, illusionary expression. The more you, the more you believe that you will never be loved by anyone else, the more that will manifest. And to be quite honest, if you want to love your, if you want to manifest love, a loving partner of any sort, whether that be a divine partner, a soulmate, uh, whatever, you're not going to be able to manifest that until you show yourself that. And you won't be able to show yourself that until you break free, until you take the risk to honor yourself. Despite what other people tell you, despite what other programming family members or friends friends may have put into you to scare you into thinking that you cannot be authentic, and until you stop deluding and pulling the wool over your own eyes and creating all kinds of illusions around yourself, you will not be able to experience self-love. Yeah? Alrighty. So next, I want to get into some clarifiers. So I am going to shuffle a little bit here and I'm going to ask Spirit to please bring forward two messages for each card um, in relation to clarifiers. Yes? Thank you, Spirit. Okay, one more shuffle. Woo! Let's try that again. And again, I'm going to just freestyle pull, freestyle shuffle, and whatever wants to fall out will fall out. All right, so for card number 34, Breaking Free. Two clarifiers, please, Spirit. One, whoop, two. Oh, wait, something else flipped over. Okay, three. We've got the Four of Cups. Aha. So we got three messages here. The Four of Cups is in reverse. Um, and what this is talking about when it comes to breaking free is the fact that, 22, 22 on the counter, the fact that the universe has been trying to hand us this cup of love, of self-love for so long. And now, instead of ignoring it and saying, no, I could never do that with the Four of Cups, now we're actually moving, what this is saying to me literally is we are actually moving into an energetic register, a vibratory reality in which people will be confident enough and say, yes, actually, I can take this cup. Why? Because this cup has been, number one, has been offered to me consistently for a long time and it's still sitting here because the universe is never gonna give up on you. But number two, it's like, no, I am tired of not honoring myself. I am tired of being on this merry-go-round. I want to break free, so I'm gonna take this cup, universe. Hallelujah, can I get an amen? I love that. I'm gonna take this card next. And we have, oh wow, we have the Four of Pentacles. Breaking free from um, material ties. Finally starting to understand that what everyone has been preaching around you actually doesn't really line up. And wondering, well, wait, is there really something more out there? I really, do I really have to stay on this merry-go-round all the time? I mean, this merry-go-round hasn't been making me happy. It didn't make my sister happy. It didn't make my brother happy. It's not making my cousin happy. And it definitely did not make my parents happy. So why am I still on this? Why can't I do something different? Hmm. Okay, we've got one more card here, and this card came up sideways, and it is the Chariot. The Chariot is about um, moving uh, in the direction of your desires. It's about reining in your emotions, your, uh, balancing your, your darkness and your light, and using that balance to propel you forward towards what it is you truly desire. And it tends to be very quick movement. Now. The thing about it is, the kicker is it fell on the table sideways. So there's still some indecision here. And you know what? That's okay. Because ultimately, you really just need to take take the lead. So 
what I'm getting from the chariot in reverse is many of you are le are sitting here listening to this message being like, I don't, I don't know, Eric, I don't know. Can I really take that risk? Well, why not? If you can take a risk for others in, in their time of need, why can't you take a risk for yourself? Why can't, why do you love others so much, but you don't love yourself so much to put yourself first and actually take a risk towards something that has been, something that the universe has been telling you will make you happy. You just got to trust us. Because ultimately we're here to, to give you what you want. That is our job as the universe. We are here to give you what you want, what you ask us for. And what you've asked, been asking us for is love. So good. Start at the bottom and work your way up. Start at the root and work your way out. And what's the root? You. You are the root of your reality. You are the creator of your reality. You are the master of your domain. So why is it, why is it that everyone else around you should get love, but you can't? The love that they desire. Or at least you can attempt to give the people around you the love that they desire, but you personally, you don't get none. Why? I don't get it. Does not compute, <laughs> says the universe. Okay, so next for card 48, which is taking the risk. Two clarifiers, please, spirits. Two clarifiers, please, spirits. One, the eight of swords. In reverse. Good. So, oh, and two. All right. So we've got people, we, we're breaking out. We are breaking out of this mental prison of not being able to, um, to take this risk, not being able or willing to say, look, I'm, I'm done following everyone else. I want to do what I want to do. I want to love myself. I want to take my own adventure. I want to go after what it, I want to go after what my heart's desires are. And the thing about the Eight of Swords is, at any moment, this woman can take the veil off, can take off the blindfold, and, and finesse her way out of those swords. And with it in reverse, we've got people doing that. I like it. And I'm going to say that this ha absolutely has to do with this, this shift, this ascension that we're we're, we're moving from the third dimension into the fifth dimension. So understand that if you have been struggling with this, as time goes on, as the energies continue to shift, um, you will you will find it easier to do this because we will literally be moving into an energetic vibration of unconditional love, okay? I will drink to that. All right, we got the eight of swords in reverse with, wow, that's very interesting, the nine of swords. So, okay, we're breaking out of this, this mental prison. So with the eight of swords in reverse, I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of people say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm breaking myself out of this mental prison. And they take the step and then all of a sudden the anxiety hits. <laughs> and you know what? That makes perfect sense. Okay. This, anything that's risky is going, it's probably going to drum, drum up a, a healthy dose of fear. And I'm not going to say fear is always a bad thing. Fear actually is a defense mechanism of the ego. The problem with fear is we tend to allow it to control us, to stop us from doing what it is we really truly want to be doing instead of moving forward with it, with the understanding that the universe has our backs. The universe is not going to let us fall. The universe, well, at least not going to let us fall far. The universe is always going to catch us. But it's that disbelief that the universe has our backs that really destroys us in the end. Because that disbelief becomes a, what? Say it with me, y'all. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. So that's what the Nine of Swords is talking about here. But, the, but again, like I said before, we are moving to a brand new energetic uh, uh, register, really. And so as we move forward in this ascension process, things will become easier to accept. We will be moving out of the three-dimensional fearful paradigm, moving into the fourth dimension, um, and you know, experiencing something very, very different ultimately once we get into the fifth as well. Many of you may be already feeling the fifth dimensional energies. Again, if you're interested in what's going on with all this, I highly recommend that you check out Aluna Ash. Yes, A-L-U-N-A. A-S-H, two words. Now, spirit, for card number 25 here, the illusionist, 
two clarifiers, uh, please. At least two. Well, no. <laughs> Just two, please. One. Strength. Yes. And the fool. Oh, my. Oh, my stars. Look at this. Strength. The strength, having the strength, having the balls to be honest with yourself. To stop deluding yourself, to stop lying to yourself, to stop pulling the wool over your own eyes and believing that you can't have the things that you truly desire. And what is the one thing that we all truly desire the most? Love. Unconditional love is what I just heard. And the only way you're going to do that is you have, is if you have the strength and the balls, to the strength to show it to yourself and the balls to jump off that cliff towards the unknown, which is loving yourself fully and unconditionally and not knowing how the world is going to react, not knowing what's going to come of it. And honestly, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the world thinks about it. It doesn't matter what comes of it. It doesn't matter who, who leaves your life because you decided to honor yourself and love yourself the way you know you want to be loved instead of allowing other people to tell you how you should love yourself. Because ultimately, and this is something that's coming through for some of you that are watching this right now, if you have people in your ear that are telling you you have to love yourself in a certain way, the only reason they are saying that to you is because it benefits them because it validates their own opinion. Doesn't do a damn thing for you, but keep you in a state where you are questioning whether or not you truly love yourself if you don't do these things. And I'm here to tell you guys, your higher self will tell you exactly what you need. Your body, your heart will always tell you exactly what you need to be loved, to feel loved, to feel safe. But listening to that is going to take strength and a little bit of foolish, a little bit of the fool energy to release this illusionary aspect. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Unicorns are next. I'm just going to ask, so unicorns, if you could just give us two action steps, what are some actions we can take to move towards this self-loving vibration? To move out of a self-defeating vibration and into a self-loving and ultimately unconditionally loving vibration, yes? One more shuffle. All right. All right, unicorns and spirit. Two cards, please. Just two. Two cards, please. One. Possibility. All right. Well, here we go. First message that came out, not the first message. So, I'm, okay, I'm going to read this one first. Beloved. Ah, oh, wow. Beloved and possibility. So, beloved says, prepare for your life partner. Romance is returning to your relationship. Believe you are lovable. Believe that you are lovable just as you are. You don't have to change yourself for anybody else. If you want to make changes to your life and how you approach the world, how you approach your life, your body, your mind, your spirit, your heart, go right ahead. But in no way do you need to do that just so that you can be with someone else. If you, if you in your path towards loving yourself find that there are some habits or some things that you do that are detrimental to you, by all means, make the changes. But never allow someone else to come around and, and manipulate and manipulate you into saying, mm, well, that's not acceptable, so you need to change that. Oh, yeah? By whose standards? Yours? I don't think so. By Felicia. Because I love myself for who I am, not who you want me to be. So if you can't take me as I am, then y'all just need to kick the rocks. Y'all need to just get the F up out of here because I ain't having it. Right? Believe that you are lovable just as you are. Because you are. 
You came here as an individual to be the person that you, you are to begin with, not who everyone else tells you to be. I mean, I keep saying that in most of my videos, but I guess that's a, that is a major theme of my life, to be honest. But anyway, that's a whole other topic for another day. The next card we have is possibility. Raise your standards. Elevate your expectations. You have unlimited potential. Don't dumb yourself down. Don't water yourself down. Don't change yourself just because someone else can't handle you. If you can't handle the heat, get the F up out the kitchen. <laughs> you know, like, believe you are lovable and also believe that you have unlimited potential. And if someone doesn't meet your standards, you don't have to settle. Nor do you have to settle for your own standards. Okay, we're talking about self-love here. So maybe it's that people need to raise their own standards for themselves. If you know that you can do better, if you know that you can be better, then love yourself enough to do it. To do all of it. Do the things. Do all the things for you. If you know that it'll make you happy, if you know it'll make you feel better, if you know it'll bring you to a spot where you can show up and be there for yourself and be a fierce, badass bitch that you know you are, then do it. Don't do it for anybody else. Do it for you. Why? Because you love yourself. Because you respect yourself. Because you want to see yourself succeed. And let the naysayers come around and be like, nah, he can't do that. She can't do that. Well, who, who you think you is? Actually, I know who I am. And I'm going to show you. So you can sit there and talk your shit. I'm going to go over here and do what I got to do. Okay? Deuces. <laughs> Trying to play me like that. I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Um, Archangel Raphael is wanting to join the party. So welcome, Archangel Raphael. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so... Three, I heard three messages. All right, so we've got three messages coming through for our, our, from Archangel Raphael. And I'm just gonna shuffle up a little bit more. Okay, and I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna let you speak, Archangel Raphael. So, what do you have for us? <laughs> now he's saying, well, two is enough. Okay, well, whatever wants to come out, you just let me know. One, second opinion. Dear God and Archangel Raphael, guide me to the best healthcare professionals for this situation. Okay, yep, we will get into that in just a second. Uh, okay, yes, there's a, there's one more message. So we're doing two, so one more, please. Oh, so funny. He says that, and then what happens? Two more came out, so we ended up having three. Anyway, you tricked me, haha. -ha. Yes, I did, that was funny, wasn't it? Yes, it was funny. Okay, so first of all, let's start with second opinion. Dear God and Archangel Raphael, give me, or excuse me, guide me to the best hair, best hair health care professionals for this situation. So, right off the bat, what this is saying to me is, don't allow one one person's opinion to sway you if you know something doesn't feel right about that. So we'll take the example from this card here. If you are dealing with a health a health situation. And you go to your doctor, and it, we'll say it's like the family doctor, been there, been going to this person for years. And that doctor says, no, you're fine. I'm not finding anything. And you leave there, and in your gut and in your heart, you're saying, no, something is wrong. I need a second opinion. Well, sure, you can be loyal to that doctor, but just because that doctor didn't find something doesn't mean the other one did, won't. If you feel like you need another opinion, go get another opinion. If you feel like somebody in your life is leading you astray some way, maybe don't take their opinion. Maybe go within and see what your heart says about it. And if your heart says, well, maybe we should talk to this person, then go talk to that person. I think the real message here for second opinion is don't take anyone's words uh, as doctrine. Ever. Not even mine, guys. Because ultimately, I'm just moving from my own personal opinion and my own um, experience in life. If something doesn't resonate with you, then leave it and move on. Get another opinion. Get Look for a new perspective. Yeah? Next, we have sunlight. Dear Archangel Raphael, please help me enjoy the benefits of sunshine in safe and healthy ways. So if you're having trouble connecting with yourself, if you're having trouble finding the real truth within you that is underneath all of the... Um, 
I heard karma and conditioning and opinions of others around you. Let the sun burn it away. Let nature release you from that. Go out in the sun. Um, go out to a park. Go for a walk. Um, I would actually, something that's coming through for some of you, a few of you that are watching this right now, um, you would really benefit from a morning walk. And there are some of you that have been already getting that message, but have been kind of um, pushing it aside. Some of you have also been getting a message of daily meditation. I practice daily meditation. I, I meditate every day before I wake up. I'm sorry, before I get up. Um, and sometimes I'll do it later on in the day if I have the time. Um, but you could use like a morning walk as your meditation. You don't have to be sitting, you know, in a meditation pose to meditate. You could just take a walk and let your mind clear and let, and you know, let things come up. And so when something comes up, look at it, view it, thank it for its presence and then move, move on. Yeah. And finally, we have home help. Dear God and Archangel Raphael, thank you for giving me the courage to ask for and accept help from you, the angels, and others in matters regarding my family and home. All right, check it out, guys. This is a direct message for some of you that are struggling with the opinions of your family members. You are being asked to ask for help and for guidance, and you're being asked directly from the angelic realm. Let God and the angels help you. Pray. Ask them to help them show you a way to free yourself from the confines of um, constricting family views. And now this family doesn't have to be your immediate family. This could be soul family, I'm hearing. But if it's soul family, then they're more... Well, everybody's playing out a role. Um, but I did hear soul family for some reason. I feel like there are some of you that are um, caught up in a corrupted spiritual system that is really um, detrimental to you. Um, but it could be friends. It could be people that you hold really dear to you that you consider to be like family. But ultimately, their opinions are getting in your, in your way, getting in the way of you living your fullest and deepest expression. So God and the angelic realms are directly asking you to ask them for help because they can't help you manifest. They cannot get into um, your physical life into your physical dealings without your permission. So that means that if you are stuck somewhere and you really, you can't seem to find a way out of it, pray, ask God, be like, God, can you help me out here? Like, help me, help me find a way out of this. Because ultimately, God and the angels um, and the universe, just, just the universe as a whole is so, is so infinitely more conscious than the human mind and is able to help bring things to you in ways that you never even would have thought about thinking about. Right? Right. Um, okay. I'm going to pull two cards from the Whispers of Love, and then I'm going to finish this reading out with one card from the Oracle of Visions, Jack. Yeah? All right, spirit. So, two cards, please, from the Oracle of Visions deck. Two cards, please, spirit. One. We have be in the present and dream of the future. When we dream, everything is possible. One more card, please, spirit. One more card, please. Woo, this one. No, this one, there it is. And forgiveness. Nothing can be gained by holding on to past disappointments. All right, so I love, first of all, I love this card. There is so much cosmic energy here. It's just like so fantastic. But when I see this card, I think literally about dreaming of what it is you want and working with the universe to get it. But the only way that you can do that, the only way that you can work with the universe to get it is if you are in the present moment. Now, I already feel the resistance towards that because for a lot of us, especially if you were really drawn to this video, you may be experiencing a lot of extreme um, disappointment with the present moment, okay? But the best thing for you to understand is if you find yourself in that situation, know that the fact that you are aware of all of this disappointment 
is a very, very good thing and is your first step towards fixing it. Because now that you have the awareness of what is making you disappointed, you have a greater awareness of what it is you truly want. So from that platform, you can then shift everything around, shift your focus, change it to change instead of focusing on instead of being in the present moment and focusing on what it is is making making you upset or disappointing you. Now you have the ability to take that juxtaposition and switch your focus towards that which would make you feel better. What it is you that you truly want in relation to what it is you're finding here. So being in the present moment means experiencing what you're going through at this moment in time and then using that to dream further and dream of the future to help the universe bring that future towards you. Now, as you dream of that future, make sure that what you are dreaming about feels good to you because your emotions are your compass. If you're moving in a direction that feels good to you, keep going. If you're moving in, or if at any moment you are, you find yourself moving in a direction that does not feel good, stop immediately and turn your attention towards that which will make you feel good or does make you feel good. Okay. Okay. And then finally here we have forgiveness. Nothing can be gained by holding on to past disappointments. So in relation to the analogy I just gave you, if you are in a current moment and there's a shit ton of, of disappointment around you, that's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. And to be quite honest, excuse me, how can you know what it is you truly want if you don't experience that which you don't want? Ah, light bulb. So okay, that's cool. You're in a moment right now where you... You need to forgive yourself. You need to give forgive some other people around you. No sweat. Work on the forgiveness. And then use this experience that you've been going through. You see this candle here? This can My attention is being drawn to this candle. Because all of this disappointment that you're feeling is only illuminating for you that which you truly want in the end. And now that you have illuminated a little more of what does not make you happy and what you don't want in your life, you can move towards that which you do by moving away from what makes you unhappy. Yeah? Yes! Okay, finally, I want to get one card of advice from the Crystal Mandala deck. Just going to get these three shuffles. Okay, so Spirit, just one card please to close out this reading. Best message in relation to the blockages towards self-love. One card please, Spirit. Just one card. Just one. There it is. Okay. We have... Oh my God, this is a beautiful card. Our, uh, Angel Khalil and Polychrome Jasper. Sacred Play. This card has never come out before in any of the readings that I've done with this deck. Look at how beautiful this card is. This card just kind of screams unconditional love to me, which is ultimately where we're going. Unconditional love, but then that's tempered by wisdom and intellect, which we have represented. The, the pink represents unconditional love, and I'm and the blue and purple, blue to me represents intellect, purple um, to me represents spiritual wisdom. And then we have some red there too. We've got a little bit of red in there and a little bit of yellow, which is also like kind of grounding the energy and helping generate willpower, strength of will. And um, this card is Sacred Play. So I am gonna read from the book, but also what I'm channeling here is, especially in relation to you know risk taking, it's really helpful to start seeing our lives as a playground, as an eternal dance of play with the universe. Ultimately, we are the ones that create what we see in our reality. There are some situations that we come into that we're destined to, be, to, to experience, but that's because we chose to learn it, learn from it. If you, can, if you can do the mental, develop the mental flexibility, do the mental gymnastics to see everything in your life as a game with the universe that is just helping everyone expand, learn, and grow, then honestly, 
you will have a much easier time with life. And being playful is a great way to show yourself some unconditional love. No matter the circumstance, you could be in the worst situation that you have ever, ever experienced in your life. But if you can find a way to make yourself laugh throughout that situation, I promise you guys, you will be able to surmount it much easier than you think you could if you didn't. And I'm speaking from experience there. Absolutely speaking from experience. All right. So I just want to read a little bit of this for you guys. Angel Khalil and Polychrome Jasper. Sacred Play. We bring you the gift of sacred play. We enter your heart bringing joy and an ability to have fun, to laugh, to see the silly and playful side of life, and to be entertained by the wonderful spectacle of life. When you know how to look, you will see the joyful hand of the creator behind so many of the people, places, and things you see every day. You will begin to feel the creator's delight in creation, and you will feel laughter deep in your soul, a joyful connection with the universe as you re realize that even in its strange and sometimes dark mystery, life has a brightness and delight to it, a sense of humor, and a quirky, amusing, enjoyable beauty. We know there is great joy inside you, and we will help you reconnect with that joy now so even your most arduous challenges will not diminish your capacity to feel the light of your spirit and take delight in your life. Honestly, I think that is such a beautiful way to end this reading. Yeah? So, there it is, guys. Oh, wait. Well, yeah. I want to just give you another chance to just, like, check out the cards there. Our beautiful spread, yeah? It actually turned out to be a really great reading. I'm very, very happy that I did this. Um, please don't hesitate to let me know how this resonates with you. Let's start a conversation about it. Um, if there are some specific things that you want to point out, if there are some things that you know came up for you that you think that you want to add to the conversation, please, by all means, let's talk about this. This is a discussion, yeah, guys? All right, cool. So... Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to connecting with you all again. And I also look forward to our next conversation, which I don't know when or what it'll be about, but I'm sure Spirit will drop something in my lap at the perfect time. Yeah? Mwah. Much love to you all. Thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to, to, to chatting with you guys again soon. Take care. Bye.